All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Rejects and Friends. It's been a little bit. We've had a little bit of a hiatus, but we are back. We are going to have a fantastic games list reveal. I know you've been waiting for that for such a long time. But before that, we have a fantastic performance of the Minish Cap Fire Rod Percent by Nimbus125. As you can see, <laughs> Nimbus is supporting Raf with the Raf 2023 hype. So put your hands together and uh, support Nimbus as he gets through this fun category. Yep. And look, so if you've if you've played Minish Cap, you might be wondering, wait, what the hell is a fire rod? I don't remember there being a fire rod in this game. Uh, and you're right, there normally isn't in the vanilla game. However, there is an unused item called the fire rod that does some pretty goofy things. So what we think happened is early in development, you know, they tried out having a fire rod item, decided they didn't like it for who knows why, and scrapped it. But instead of completely scrapping it, they repurposed it into a debug stick. Uh, the main thing, the main two things this debug stick does is it lets you copy paste tiles around and it lets you cycle through tiles. So it's effectively an in-game level editor on a stick, which is leads to a lot of goofy nonsense. And so technically this is not the vanilla game. There is in a tiny patch in order to make the fire rod accessible and to give it an inventory slot. Everything else about the game is perfectly normal though. Uh, and even though the fire rod is a really powerful item, we do actually have to do most of the game, like more than you think it is. You can only skip one boss and like a third of the items or so. So this is less go beat the final boss as quick as possible and more of do everything as fast as possible and it's really neat anyway i think we can get started we could too all right time will start when i press yes in five four three two one go all right best of luck thank you so first we get to watch an intro cutscene. There's a lot of lore. No one cares about lore. So there's going to be a lot of recurring techniques we use with a fire rod throughout the run. The first of which is called a screen wrap. Basically, if you hit the left loading zone from the left or the top loading zone from above, you'll transition to the right and down respectively as if you hit the right or down loading zones. Normally, we just use this in order to transition down or right faster than having to cross the entire room. Uh, you can also transition left and up, but it's really hard and kind of wonky. I, I don't. I definitely don't know how it works fully. I don't know if anyone knows how it works fully, but we'll see it very shortly. We're gonna get the fire on almost immediately. We don't start with it. Uh, there's a chest in Link's house that normally contains 20 rubies, yes. Uh, it's been replaced with the fire rod item itself. That chest up there. So we're just going to do a little bit of tech smashing. And then open that up. Now an important thing to note about this game is the rooms aren't stored geographically like in the game's memory itself. So they're all sorted by like what kind of room they are. So for example, all of most of the stored master dojos are stored in a horizontal line. Most of the beanstalks are stored in a horizontal line. Most of the tree interiors are in a line. Right. And so what's left of Link's house is not like Hyrule Field. Here's the fire rod. But instead, instead, it is Dampe's house. And now we're out here. And now we're in North Hyrule Field. And so this is kind of the whole run, is just using these sort of out-of-bounds oh. warps oh. to go from point A to point B really, really fast. Here we're walking around a cutscene trigger. Normally that would lock you into like a two-minute long cutscene. And here you can see we're deleting the walls 
with floor to go over them and just kind of go all over the place. Here we're getting the Smith Sword. In the Fire Rod run, there's two main routes, the Sword Route and the Bomb Route. Bomb Route is faster, but way, way, way harder. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to learn how to do it. <laughs> and it's not marathon safe anyway. The Bomb Route would skip doing this if we're going to end up visiting Harrow Castle three times throughout the run. The Bomb Route only visits it once. Well. Uh, instead, we're going to use the Smith Sword as a weapon. I... Okay. I was not supposed to do that. We'll just green wrap out of here. Like so. I did an extra transition in there for some reason. And so now we're gonna head down over to this dojo. Like I said, all the dojos are in a line. And so if we screen wrap to the right, we hit another dojo. We can leave, screen wrap to the right inside this tree, leave, and hey, we're in Minish Woods. We kill that Octorok for fun. And so next we need to get Ezla before we actually go into Minish Woods. Here we're gonna drown. We're going to take this shallow water and we're going to walk all the way up here with it. And we're going to cycle it one to the left to get deep water and make temporary like, water things here. So one of the properties of shallow water, nice, one of the properties of shallow water is it doesn't update your respawn coordinates. So if you're to void by say drowning, Instead of respawning in shallow water, you'll respawn on the last valid tile. Which, once we get as on our head, will be all the way back down here. We don't have to walk back. Now we're in deep wood. <laughs> so there we just grabbed the entrance to deep wood from the left, cycled to the right a whole bunch until we hit a loading zone tile. Then, you know, we are standing on a loading zone tile where the entrance of Deepwood is supposed to be. So it says, all right, load into Deepwood. There you go. There was a technique called Shadow Link. I don't fully know how Shadow Link works, but I believe, I'm not joking, if you're familiar with parallel universes from Mario 64, I believe they're similar. I, again, don't quote me on this, but I think it's something to do with like the level collision data or the level collision coordinates overflowing. Nice. Level collision overflowing, whereas the true like screen transition coordinates not over. There we get the gush jar. Save and quit. That is the only save and quit in the whole run. Here we grab the entrance to Deepwood, walk through the web over the stairs, and now we're in the boss. Very fast. All of the dungeons are gonna be just rush straight to the dungeon item, get it, rush straight to the boss. All very, very fast. And here's the first boss of the game. And a trend you're gonna notice for a while in this run is that all the bosses are like very, very easy. <laughs> you're kind of not supposed to have this. So here we make a one tile hole in the door, and it can't hurt us, and we just stand here. And that's the fight. Nice. So if there are any questions, uh, there aren't gonna be many opportunities for questions. There's like two more. <laughs> so if you have something you really wanna ask, now is the time. Oh, RNG. How's it going is the question we get from Mini. <laughs> uh, it's going alright. We got good RNG from Green Shoe. It can either do one hop in a charge or it can do like five or six hops. You want multiple hops because then you can roll underneath it and walk to the middle of the room before it dies. Otherwise, you'd be stuck in the doorway and then Link would have to slowly walk up before the cutscene starts and saves like three seconds or something. 
We have a question from an unknown person named Bo Wildebeest who asks, do you look like that bird IRL? I do not look like Zepho or Ezla. What a shame. Anyways, <laughs> so we're going to get the hard container. We're getting all the hard containers in this game. Dying is not out of the question. I've done it before. Anyway, next our main goal is to get to Cave of Flames and Mount Colonel. So here we're going to go into this room, go a little bit out of bounds, and... Hey, we're in Malari's Lines. Look at that. Now we're in the end, the top of Mount Crenel, right outside the dungeon. All of five seconds. As I can use the fire rod. And here we go, the second dungeon. <laughs> here we're gonna... I said we're gonna grab the loading zone. Walk up here over the stairs, come up here out of bounds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four rolls. That was supposed to be four rolls. Here we're gonna grab this tile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is not supposed to be happening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on. There we go, there's the lava. So the lava tile is Supposed to be seven tiles from that floor. I think I grabbed the wrong one. And sploosh. That, I think that's my favorite fight in the run. Just sploosh all the chews at once. Next, we're gonna grab the loading zone over the locked door, skip the key. Come up here, grab this, walk over, until we cycle to a hole, and here's the box. Again, much like Green Shoe, Clear Rock is very straightforward in this run. After our roars at us. We just make a little bridge. And that's it. Just skip the whole gimmick. And again, if there's any questions, <laughs> there's not much time left for question asking in the room. Um, we did get a question from Anarakis who asked, uh, why do they call it oven when you oven in the cold food about hot eat the food? Uh, yes. Good answer. Anyway, you can just, just spam, wait for it to die. It's like, uh, you're not supposed to have this. <laughs> what color is my toothbrush? I believe it is dark. If I remember correctly. We heard dark, but then you didn't actually say the color. Oh, that I cut dark blue. Dark blue, I see. I believe. I'm surprised it's not purple, like literally everything else about you on Twitch. <laughs> anyway, this is the last cycle. And so after this, we're gonna go do kind of a bunch of errand running real we're gonna get the bow, we're gonna get a kinstone, because even with the fire rod, you cannot beat the game without using kinstones, at least once. There is no way to enter a palace of winds without fusing. So we're gonna get the bow, get a kinstone, go to town, fuse that kinstone, have the emulator lag, and then get the spin attack, and then go to the next dungeon. So once again, grab the heart and leave. Here, this is the only time in the whole run we're gonna see the shrink animation. I hope you like it. We are very close to cutting this animation out of the run. What's no, preventing you? Uh, needing to enter Malari's mines. Mm -hmm. There's no reasonable way to enter. And so shrinking just ends up being the fastest. And here's the green sword. So earlier I mentioned a bomb route. Instead of getting the smith sword, it would have gotten a bomb bag, and this would have been its first sword. 
but for us, luckily, we already got one. Here we're gonna go off to the left, just roll down a bunch. Come down here, get stuck in the wall. There we go. Pop down here, open this crack, and delete the crack. Cool, that was not supposed to happen. We'll grab this doorway instead. So that crack and the door both are loading zone tiles. There again, we put the loading zone where the hole is, which made us enter, and then we shrunk. Next, we're going to come down here, right up, transition right, one, two, three, down, and hey, look at that, a kinstone. We're going to leave again, roll up, up, right, one, two, three, and hey, look at that, enemies. And just in here is the bow, yay. And now we're in Caster Wilds. Screen wrap here, otherwise you'd have to walk a really long way. Now I'm going to do a safety save here. You don't normally do this. Uh, this is the scariest screen transition in the run. Uh, if you don't do it right, you hard lock yourself and would need to reset. And I did it wrong, cool. So, <laughs> I was one tile too high. As you saw, I missed the bridge and transitioned in the water instead. What would have happened was I would have been stuck drowning forever, and because I just came out of a screen transition, even if I did a save and quit, I would just load back in the water. And I did it. This is not hard. <laughs> this is why the estimate was a little bit high. But it's okay. We get to see at least a little bit of caster now. Because Fortress of Winds is the one dungeon we skip. Uh, yes, the shark. There we go, and now we're in town. Very nice. So if you remember in Minish Woods, we did that little trick with the shallow water to respawn all the way back because it didn't update our respawn coordinates. This path does the same thing. And so we're going to hit the Hurdy Gurdy Man cutscene trigger, step on an invalid, ti invalid tile, warp all the way back. My, we're, he's going to try and get us to fuse kinstones with him, but we're going to skip the tutorial. He's yelling at us like, hey, get back over here. Hey, get back over here. But we walk into the door instead and skip the whole thing. Anyway, here's the one fusion, the only fusion we're ever going to do with it. This opens a portal to the Wind Tribe Tower, which eventually we'll be using to go to Palace and Weapons. Not yet. We'll visit later. Next up, we need to get the spin attack. That is hard. That is hard required for a lot of things. One more. Entering the dojo from behind is just bad. I'm bad at matching through this text. So after we've learned the spin attack, we'll have gotten all the things we need. We're gonna finally head over to Temple of Droplets, normally the fourth dungeon. In this run, the third. Just right over here. Here's Lon Lon. Hi, Malin. And right over here is Temple of Droplets. So next we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one rolls. Transition up here. We're gonna make a quick little hole in the wall. It is a surprise tool that will help us. And here's Blue Chew. Uh, if you remember Green Chew, uh, it's the exact same fight. Everything is the exact same. The this normally invincible 
for parts of the fight, which is supposed to be a challenge. However, it's not really relevant for us. Just once again, make a hole in the wall. It can't hit us. We just stand here. Does that mean we have time for questions again? Yes, this is possibly the last chance for questions in the room. All right, I have a question, which is, um, okay. this is this is cool and all, but I'm still wondering um, when this run differs from Glitchless. Uh, never. This is technically a Glitchless speedrun. Because the fire, like, the fire rod is not a glitch, it is just a debug stick working the way it's supposed to. Mm. We got a question from Bewild Beast who asks, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? Woodchuck could chuck wood. Uh, about five bushels. I would guess. Hmm. Not even any pets. No. Okay, technically I lied. Optim like, task level, this isn't completely glitchless. You can do a glitch called portal items to save, like... Hang on. Oh, I can't count. Whatever. You can use a glitch called portal items to save, like, two seconds in the final boss. Yay. But other than that, it is completely glitchless. Got good RNG from both trees, which never happens. That's why. Although I counted wrong, so I had to wait for the an extra hop. Anyway, there's the lantern, and right over here. Oh, look, it's the boss. <laughs> right here, waiting for us. So this first phase, the first two phases are completely scripted. This phase, it's gonna do rock, rock, rock. And she spin around. Don transition upwards. In fact, I'm deleting the north screen transition because you can leave the boss and have to restart it. Uh, we did skip Fortress of Wind. You will never visit. It's the one dungeon you can skip in this run. In this phase, it'll do suck rock, suck rock, rock. Here, it can't pull us through the barrier. We're perfectly safe. We just stand and wait for it. Again, just stand and wait for the boss to do its attacks. Now, for phase three, it is random. It can either do rock, 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 or it can do suck, rock, ink. Each ink cycle loses like 25, 30 seconds, so we don't want to see any. In I'm pretty sure literally every other category you can do an RNG minute to guarantee perfect RNG for the fight. However, that RNG minutes have to start from a save and quit, which means starting, yep, starting from the entrance of the dungeon. And so setting up an RNG would lose itself like 25-ish seconds, so there's no point. You just get lucky. And here we did not get lucky, so we get to wait. If there's any questions again, uh, now is your real last chance. <laughs> uh, H asks, would Nimbus rather fight 10 bird-sized ponies or one pony-sized bird? Uh, 10 bird-sized ponies. There we go. One ink. One ink is average, I think. You either get zero, one, or two. Obviously you want zero. We didn't get zero. Oh well. Not a huge deal. And there, ooh, there's the water element. And I again, grab the container. Now we're gonna leave. First, that's what's gonna yell at us. Now we're gonna leave. And here, this ghost is gonna tell us to go to a corner. Why we're not gonna go there. It's really weird. Like, even in any percent, you, you don't go to this corner of the game, I don't know why. It wants you to think it exists. Instead, we're gonna grab the fire rod, come down here, into this tree, transition one, two to the right, and hey look, we're back here. So now we're gonna go fuse the green sword into the blue sword in order to do pals of winds. The bomb route would skip doing this and do pals with the green sword instead, but it is a lot 
a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot harder. There on the staircase, I did a technique called stair skip. Walking up a staircase plays like a five second animation. It's pretty slow. So normally we try to avoid walking up as many stairs as possible. There, there's like a normal loading zone, two tiles to the right of the staircase tile. So we just walk up, tap to the right twice, place an actual loading zone down and skip the walking animation. Here we're getting the red sword for all of five seconds. We do technically need to use it once. It doesn't really count. Its only use is getting the blue sword. <laughs> so for the bomb route, the reason you can skip the bomb route, or you can skip blue sword and the bomb route, somewhere, is because you fight they do this really, really massive argument throughout all of Palace and the entire Hewart fight, and it is stupidly precise. It is just, like, really, really, really hard to do. And so, instead of doing that, we're just going to get the blue sword in order to be able to make clones and do the fight normally. Did you say make clowns? Normal. Hmm? Clones. Clones. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, here we're gonna go back up here. Now we're gonna do like 800 screen wraps. Don't worry, this is normal. This is just what out of bounds looks like. Normally the camera doesn't jump to out of bounds, but for some reason it does there. I don't know why. Here we're gonna, again, we're gonna do like 800 screen wraps. This room we're gonna instead go up the stairs and then continue screen wrapping. There's one. Come from up here, go up here, go up here. Here we go. Zelda's still waiting for us. We never said hi to her. We're not gonna say hi to her. Hi, Zelda. Wow. Now we enter Wind Tribe. All the rooms are just stored in a line. So the stairs right a whole bunch. For some reason, this underpass is a loading zone. I don't know why. But it's kind of convenient. And here is Palace. Palace is scary. This is the hardest, like, fire run trick in the run. I guess you could call it. So here we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was not the hard part. Here we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Nope, grabbed the wrong tile. There's like two wall tiles here. One, two, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Easy. Grabbed it again. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eight, nine, seven, eight, ten. Come on. Wall tiles. Five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay. So there we did a trick called Rocket Link. So 18 tiles to the left from that corner tile is a climbable rock tile like you would find in Mount Crenel or Vale Falls. If you place those tiles all around yourself, Link will just shoot up in the sky insanely fast to the point where we do shadow length again the same thing we did in deep blue to just go stupid far out of bounds vertically in order to transition straight to the boss and speaking of all the bosses in this game have been really easy so far uh georg is not georg is mean i don't like Georg. georg is rude so you might have noticed, we never actually grabbed the cape. You're kind of supposed to use it for this fight. For these first two cycles, you can get away with not using it. Because you'll just void- if you void out, you respawn on the York's back. Like so. However, for phase three, we'll have to do something different. 
as the whole time you were just getting the hell beat out of you. As you can see, like, we're half health. If we skipped heart containers, we would have came over. You just eat damage so fast in this fight. I, I think I've died to Georg more than I have the, the three final bosses in a row, for reference. Cool. Thank you. Oh, cool, we got a clonless pattern. So, if the eyes are all next to each other like that, you don't need to make clones. That's what the RNG manip does, is it just guarantees perfect RNG. Got it. So for this phase, falling off doesn't respawn you on the blue cure, so we have to do a very awkward fire rod trick in order to sort of clip onto its back. Thank you. And there we go. Scary fight, but it's over. After this, we're going to go all the way back to Hyrule Castle again, do the whole fusing process. It's the exact same move we saw before in order to get the four sword and enter the final dungeon. Of course, first we have to actually get there. Once again, grab the art container. Here we're going to go one, two, three, four. Grab this Windcrest tile. Next, we're just going to stair skip using this underpass over and over and over again until we hit the bottom floor. There is a way to tile cycle the stairs, but it's like it's a lot of cycling. I think it's 11 tiles, which for me, I'm not fast enough. Zelda's still wanting to say hi to us. We're still going to ignore her by Zelda again. Gonna come in here, go one, two, three, four, five, one. And here we are. Just warp normally to the fairy the pond that's under that fountain. And once again, we're just gonna come up here, walk down the stairs. Very slowly. That's what you're trying to skip when you do the stairs get long walking animation. I don't think I mentioned it before the first time. Here we go off to the side because there's a very big cutscene trigger, which takes a while, so we just walk around it. And here we're going to get the four sword. And we're also, by the way, about to start the final dungeon. I don't know if you've, or if you've not been keeping up. Like, the run's almost over. <laughs> It is very fast. Just have to watch a tiny little cutscene. As the game says, like, hey, go to this room. It's really important. We're not going to go into that room. Instead, we're going to once again come up here, go through out of bounds garbage. Everything is normal. Don't worry. And we're out here. One, two, three, four, six, one. Come up here. Grab, nope. Grab this loading zone, over the stairs. Pop up here. One, two, three, four, five, one. Grab this. Tile the door frame, and there we go. Skip the Dark Knight. Now we kind of we have to skip the Dark Knight fight in a little bit of a weird way. If you activate the fight, it starts a timer for like three minutes or something. And if you don't beat the Dark Knights in time, you game up. Uh, if you activate the fight and then leave, that timer never actually stops. <laughs> so. What'll happen is you'll be partway through body one or body two, and then you'll suddenly game over out of nowhere. It's very funny. Here, this is body one. This is the only fight in the game where the four sword is burnt. The fire rod is completely useless. You will not be using it once. We just have to slash the outer eyes 
and then slash the inner eye. Hello. Come here. Thank you. For these phases, you can use the Gush Jar. Now, normally you wait for this to stop doing fire so you don't get that happening. But Not a huge deal. We might end up getting a six cycle. I'm not sure. Optimally, you do it in five. No, nope, that was a five cycle. Okay. Here's body two. Here we're just going to make a whole bunch of contile. Body likes to stand on them and get in the way. However, he can't get in the way if we make a million of them. Yes. Body too likes to be mean. Just slash him until he dies. So that first phase is always guaranteed to be on the bottom. Every other phase, it's just a side other than the previous one. In this case, the right. Thank you. Body. Please. This is what happens in this fight. He just... likes to get in the way as much as possible. It's very cool. Okay. It's on the left. Hopefully I don't die. There. Dying is slow, if you were not aware. You don't need to make them in perfectly straight lines, you can actually get, like, kind of creative with your thumb formations if you want. It's surprisingly lenient. Get back here. Thank you. There we go. That was about as bad as a 3-cycle game, but it was still a 3-cycle, I guess. Anyway, we're supposed to go save Zelda or something. She's a statue. We don't care. Bye, Zelda. Two, three, four, five, one, two. And here's the final fight. So first, we need to bait him off to the side a little bit. Please? He can take his time. He can take his sweet time. Oh my god, body. Thank you. <laughs> it took so long. He did give the good arm, though. We do want to save this arm first. We walk up over here, trap the eye in the doorway. Second arm. Sure. No, you cannot copy the arm the arms of entity. Here we are whoop, genuinely using a half B press to save time. If you want more Mario 64 games. And that was the last time we'll ever use the fire. Say goodbye, Fire Rod. It's now time for tennis. You only have to hit him twice to advance the cycle for some reason. I don't know why he has a solo. 
he just does. One more. Time will be on the second hit of the final volley. And that's time. GG. Thank you. And that was Fire Rod percent. Again, in the grand scheme of things, you don't actually skip that much. Like, again, we skipped one dungeon. At least as far as what any person does, that's kind of it. <laughs> but yeah, this is just credits if you want to... I don't know if you want to move on now. Uh, sure. Uh, any final words about the category? Any final thank you shoutouts that you'd like to give? Uh, so this category looks like a whole lot of nonsense, but like, mechanically speaking, it's actually the sort route that was. Bomb route's hard, but the sword route, like, once you know how to physically do all that stuff, it's really not that bad. Like, Georg and Vadi can be kind of mean, but outside of that, it's a pretty relaxing category. Uh, thanks, thank you to Myth and Dreamy for basically creating the entire route for the past, like, two years for this category. It would not be nearly as goofy were it not for them. Uh, and that's kind of it, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nemesis, again for showing that off. It was really, really mm -hmm. fun to see. And we're going to take a short break as we transition to the actual games list reveal. So this is your last chance to get people in here for some extra hype. And we'll see you in about three minutes. See you soon. <laughs> 